390 Wagon Master here. All right, so this is uh, going to be another probably half hour long video. So here we go, boys. Uh, I gave my uh, bench power supply away to my little brother over the weekend. That was about a 30 amp power supply, and the thing was like uh, 30 pounds. And I wanted to do something a little different. I needed some more amperage. Anywho, and uh, he needed a power supply, so I thought I would donate him. I'm going to uh, assemble... A couple power supplies here. I'm going to do one for Darren Needlebender99, and I'm going to do one for me. And so I'm going to start on mine first because I don't have his enclosure. So I have this uh, HP server supply all modified and ready to go. I did that last night. Uh, this is sitting at exactly 13.82. Um, and uh, yeah, this is ready to go. These will uh, supply roughly 74 amps on 110 volts, and I think they do 100 amps at uh, 220. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I am building this with the intent, and I'm going to label it as a 50 amp, so I'll have some cushion. I don't really need large power supplies anyway. Probably the biggest thing I'm ever going to run off this is going to be like a 4-pill amp or something like that every great once in a while. So no big deal. This should take care of that, I believe. But uh, anyway, I've got this old enclosure that I got from uh, Old Standard Supply slash Railco. This has been in stock since, I don't know, probably like the 70s. I looked up this manufacturer. Uh, the building is still there. Of course, they're not doing this work anymore. It's like a used clothing store, uh, bag lady clothes type thing. But anyway, it's a pretty cool enclosure. It's light duty. It's not very heavy duty, so it wouldn't uh, go well with some big transformer anyway. Um but I love the design of it. Um, I'm not really sure if this is the proper uh, term for this, but I called these a shadow box because they have this really cool little cant to it, little angle to it that kind of gives it a shadow. I just heard some old timers talking about these types of boxes back in the day. So anyway, that's what I call it, just a shadow box design. It's just really old school, really retro. You know me, I'm old, I'm old school. I'm retro. So I'm going to yard this puppy in there. I'm going to put... Um, the, the plan so far is I'm going to put a, a mini toggle switch somewhere over here to switch it on and off, and a little pilot lamp here. Now, um, at first, for a millisecond, I thought of doing like a digital meter in here somewhere, but I don't really dig the look of those. And um, I want to keep this box kind of retro looking. So uh, I'm going to come up with some sort of uh, volt and amp meter, possibly. I may put something in here. Uh, they'll be analog if I do, because I'll keep that old school look. The only thing I have right now are like some Chinese ones. Not really sure if that's the way I want to go. And I was I like to use those old uh, Blue Sea uh, meters, Blue Seas, marine stuff, just because I like the looks of them. And you can uh, light those relatively easy. Or illuminate them, I should say. But I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do that. I may just do a, a toggle switch and a pilot lamp. So on the back, I just plan on um, putting a master um, on-off switch for this. Because even though these are powered up um, and you turn off, uh, you turn uh, the device on and off with this switch uh, up front, this will still be live. And I like the idea of having like a master cutoff switch on the back with a fuse, I'll put like a five or 10 amp fuse in there. I'm not really sure what that pulls. I'll have to take a look, but I don't care about that. That's just not that big a deal. However, I wanted to do some uh, some posts here and uh, I'll put the, the little uh, master power circuit here somewhere, I believe, uh, and just keep it simple. I was also thinking of, I've got another uh, old school enclosure that's about a fourth of this size. I was thinking of maybe um, uh, hooking up to the binding post here and doing an umbilical cord, maybe some eight gauge, really flexy eight gauge uh, wire and doing like a uh, slave box or a remote, a remote mounted box. This would be somewhere either under the bench on a shelf or somewhere. And then, um, so the bulk of it is here and then I'd have a smaller box up top. I don't really know. Not really sure, but anyway, I'm just going to start fitting things, and then we'll just see what happens. I kind of like this look. I think just an on-off pilot light would be great. However, I would like to 
possibly for down the road uh, monitor uh, amperage and uh, voltage, I guess, as well. So anyway, I don't know. We'll see. All right, let's get started. So this is what I was talking about with the meters. I was thinking of doing maybe a set of meters in here. Uh, they take up a lot of the uh, space up here on the front. However, I only have a 10 amp meter, so that's not going to fly. So if I'm going to do something like this, I'm going to need to order another one. And we'll see. By the way, I checked these just to see when I ordered these. Um, I checked these to see how accurate they were. And this voltmeter was very accurate. And the amp meter was accurate. Um, I tested it at about two and a quarter to two and a half amps. And it read just fine. So pretty cool. Anyway, not going to happen on this project, unfortunately. Well, this is kind of a neat surprise. So I took the top off of the box. And this is one of those uh cool old school boxes where you could uh mount your tube sockets in there and uh yeah do all that so basically what you would do is you would uh, cut this out put your tube sockets in there lay everything out the way you want to do it build it on the bottom side you could actually put these rails on here and build it like on your bench and then set it down on in here and then mount the, I think they, they would call that like the sub chassis. I'm not really sure. Instead of stopping to do little individual clips and whatnot and make this like a half hour video, I decided to not do that. I took a few still photos as you saw earlier. Oh, there's some radio action going on. Of course, now while I'm filming. Anyway, um, so here it is. Uh, this is the final mock-up and test. And uh, what I did was um, I did not, I opted to not put a panel lamp right here. I was thinking of putting a panel lamp right here. I thought that would be kind of a cool old school look. And I thought, you know, that's too easy. I need to make it hard. need to add another hour to my project. So I did something custom. And I just put an LED here as a pilot LED, and that's basically a, a blue LED with a piece of vellum paper between the LED and the back of the meter. And I had to take the meter apart and then drill the hole and everything. And then I got another wild hair to put a, a white LED right there at the 13 volt mark, and I decided to not do that. But the holes there, that was stupid. That was a dumb idea. So anyway, um, here's what happens when you turn it on. And this is sitting at exactly 13.2 volts. So my meter's pretty close. It's just half a needle's width above the 13 mark. So that's cool. Um, I don't know about current draw yet as far as that goes because this is just my initial fire up. And I don't have a load. I don't have a test load. So I'm going to have to do something. I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyway, so that's that. But I know it works. It's, it has to work. So here's our on-off. Okay, I don't have um, any toroids or anything like that in here. I actually wanted to do that stuff last. Again, this is kind of a mock-up. This may or may not be the final mock-up. So what I did is I put a master switch on the back because uh, the uh, power supply is still on. It's still energized. It just doesn't have voltage output. So for those times you go on vacation or if I'm not going to use it for a couple days, I'm used to this with my amp that 3 made did for me. He did my amp like this too, and I like that. I don't mind reaching back there and just hitting the master. Okay, so um, I know this is over, way overdone on the lugs, but um, I did it <laughs> that way. And I may go back and revise that. Anyway, I used 3 8 inch studs. I made my own insulator system, Teflon, and um, yeah, and then here is the shunt for the amp meter. So I basically use this shunt as a as as a, as a you know distribution block, so to speak. Um, I opted to not solder on to those tabs like everybody does. I ordered I optioned to do this. 
Just because that's what I did. I ran out of hardware, so I made wire loops and soldered them. So that those are basically like lug terminals, right? Just anyway, homebrew. And then this is our low voltage switch, which is basically grounds from pins one and four. And there's the LED back there. And uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, let's see, what else? Um, the screws that hold in the master power panel. And by the way, I need to, oh, actually, I need to pull the fuse out of there. I don't know what fuse, amp fuse is in there. I, I believe I'm going to start out with a, um, I don't know, I might do a three. I, I can't remember what fuses came with this, but I believe some of them were f a five and a 10. And I'm going to say there's probably a one or a three in there now, but I'll find out when I load test it. I have exactly 13.2 volts. These things are super, super stable um, at the back. And I just opted to do it this way, uh, mostly because of budget. And I don't like buying something I can make. This wasn't hard to engineer. You know, this is totally insulated and um, it's good to go. I plan on doing... Uh, so this is going to be like the master power supply. And I've got another shadow box cabinet that I was going to do as a slave power supply. And I'm thinking of maybe possibly putting this under my bench. And then I'll have the smaller slave box up here somewhere. So I've got options as far as all that goes. So um, again, this is like a 1970s shadow box uh, enclosure. And I was super nervous doing doing all the holes and everything because I didn't want to scratch it, and I did not. I didn't even ding a corner. So that is cool. Um, yeah, I was doing one of the last one of the last things there, and I accidentally smacked the front here with my uh, pliers. Thank God nothing happened. But anyway, I was really stressing about that. Meters are straight. Everything's lined up just fine to like the millimeter or less. Let's throw the, let's throw the cover on. Oh, dude, that thing is cool. I love it. I love the old school shadow box design. I think Texas Star Amps look cool because they do that shadow box as well. This is just an old design that I really, really dig. It's on the Redco meter back, or uh, yeah, frequency counter, meter frequency counter, whatever. And so I like that design. And I just wanted it clear here, or, you know, really clean, but very functional. So, uh, yeah. Tell me uh, tell me what you think there down in the comments. And uh, I'll do another video, like, maybe showing some amp draw and stuff. But uh, anyway, right now, I just don't have anything. I've been thinking about ordering a one of those 500 amp load testers. So I think I may just do that, but, um, this has kind of been a spendy project. It's a little more expensive than I wanted to, to spend on it, but with everything total, cause I paid through the nose for this enclosure. Um, I bought this at the very, very beginning of COVID when prices weren't crazy yet. Yeah. About, I want to say six years ago. Anyway, no, I think I bought it in 2020. Whatever, I don't know. Anyway, I paid $38 for the enclosure. Crazy? Yes. Uh, totally crazy. That was just way too much money. But I like my guys at Standard Supply slash Railco. Robert's a good guy. And it's the look that I wanted. I was going to build like a 10 amp power supply in here with the transformer. Just do a regulated uh, linear type power supply. But I opted for the... Uh, 75 amp switcher 74 amp but basically uh this is a fifth you know i i'm rating this in my mind at 50 amps the meter only goes to 50 amps so i've got some leeway in here and uh, i'm just going to treat it as a 50 amp power supply i'd rather i'd much rather do that now if i ever want to upgrade this and say like do it as a hundred i've got room in there for another um for another one of these so anyway 
Um, I learned how to mod these uh, power supplies actually by the uh, BMW guys, the car guys over in Germany. They uh, they stack these power supplies up, these old server supplies. Uh, they stack them up and uh, use them to tune their cars and their beamers and stuff. So that was really cool. And then there were some other guys here locally or in the in the U.S. I think I found a donkey stomper one and um, uh, there was a BBI one, but I just saw the thumbnail of that one and that I didn't want to do it that way. I wanted mine a little cleaner. So anyway, it was harder to do. The mod was harder to do the way I did it, but I did it the way the Europeans do it. And um, it worked out great. Absolutely great. These things are rock solid. So I have a decent 50 amp power supply. This should run my four pill, no problem. And just stuff on the bench. I don't build amps. I don't run big amps ever hardly at all. That four pill will probably be the biggest I ever have, uh, for emergency purposes only, of course. But, uh, anyway, I just wanted a beefier power supply and my little 30 amp jobs weren't cutting it. And, uh, there's, you know, no way would, would, a, would one of those thirties do my, uh, tech nine, four pill. So there you go. So, uh, give me, uh, give me your input on this cream puff and I got to clean the cover the, uh, it was in uh, like a shrink wrap that had holes in it, I guess, for ventilation. And so there's some marks on it and some scuffs, stuff there, stuff there. But I don't care. Uh, that was all done like while it was in the packaging. And uh, the stuff that I did came out clean as far as I'm concerned. I think that came out pretty clean. All right. Please leave questions or comments down below. And uh, cool. Thanks for watching. We need a logo right here got to be a logo. We got to do something here. I don't know. Anyway, sweet. Mm -hmm.